Well, I think it's an exciting day today at the Rachel Carson Center. Dennis Meadows is coming to visit us. Dennis Meadows is the author or the co-author of an important study that was published in 1972. It was done a report that was done for the Club of Rome, a study that really projected what would happen in the future on the basis of a world model, what would happen in the future with a permanently rising world population but with limited resources. This book was made a big splash in 1972. It was updated a few times. We're excited to have Dennis Meadows here this year, almost exactly 40 years after the publication of the book, a book that sold 30 million times and was translated in more than 30 languages. Games are in a way like sex. If you have to spend a lot of time talking about it beforehand, it's not going to be nearly as much fun. So we will talk about this game afterwards. <laughs> so we have five teams. Your team's goal is using only the wooden block and also the pie pan to build the best possible self-supporting structure. Self-supporting means you can't hold it up. It really has to stand by itself. So in, in your box, you will find these short, thin wooden blocks. So take three of those, doesn't make what, any difference what color, and put the blocks in three under the pans. Here are the rules. You have up to 10 minutes to plan, to decide what you're going to do, and do it. Don't take the blocks out from under the pan and build on the pan. This is not level. This, this is... See, you see the gaps in there. Uh, if I see it, the other thing. No, that doesn't work. Yeah. It's small already, make it like this. Put this in the middle. <laughs> to combine height with solidity and stability and with a few aesthetic flourishes. <laughs> we didn't exploit all of our resources. We saved some so that we can repair it if need be. Thank you. Okay. I think uh, ours is attractive. <laughs> <laughs> it's also the self-organizing principle of the universe. Uh. <laughs> Chaos. <laughs> The unexpected surprise is in the form that those three blocks underneath the pie plan have to be removed without touching the pan. So if you do it like this, then we see that it's at the same time. And what if it comes to come out? Okay. Do it all at the same time. There you go. Keep going, keep going. Slowly, slowly. Come on, Yolanda. That's interesting. Uh, although a future event may seem inevitable, do not depend upon it completely. For things quite often turn out very differently from what had generally predicted. The, we say in English, the most surprising thing will be if there's no surprise. Yet, people start on their programs somehow imagining the situation is going to be like it is now. Look at discussions about sustainable development. When we start to talk about sustainable development, of course we start now, but we somehow have the idea that the things we are proposing are going to be developed in a period which is like this one, same general conditions. Not true. I'm certain that circumstances will be very different. Different governments, different economic circumstances, different standard of living. So when we set out to do something, we have to understand that it will come finally to realization under different circumstances. So what we're talking here, we're illustrating basically resilience. The ability of a system, in this case a very simple system, to take a shock and still satisfy your goals. In some cases, you had after the shock basically the same tower as before. So in Japan, for example, that when there's an earthquake, how to build a city that's resilient so that after the earthquake, quickly the functions return. What it means is the ability to absorb a shock, some kind of unexpected thing, 
and quickly regain the ability to perform essential functions. Even though you have smart people who know what they want and they agree on what they want and they're going to work as hard as they can to get it, the system may give you something different, which of course is true with climate change. Nobody wants CO2 to go up. It goes up. There are thousands of games. The thing to know about games is that they're like a spice for soup. But the spice is not the soup, and you wouldn't try to make a whole meal just by eating the spice. You, know, you need the soup, and it's like that. This is like a spice for a good workshop. If you have a really bad soup, putting some spice into it isn't going to make it good. And if you have a really bad workshop, bad ideas, you can play games and it doesn't make any difference. It's still a bad workshop. Thank you. Can we realistically expect rich nations like Germany or half rich nations like or China voluntarily to stop acquiring and, and consuming in order to make Africans or Bolivians rich? No. So what is the outcome? Are we basically saying our modern dreams of equality and so on belong to a world of the past, natural abundance um, that's now disappearing? I have spent a lot of time in really, really poor areas. I, I'm not just sitting in my little rich, you know, New Hampshire house pontificating about uh, the poor people. I, I do that also, but I, <laughs> uh, but I, mean, I, I have some personal experience of poverty and I don't like it. I mean, I, would I like to live where I'm hungry and cold and I have to worry that my kids are going to die uh, because I, no, I wouldn't like that. And I, and I, I'm extremely unhappy about it. Anyway, for the last 300,000 years, there have been enormous discrepancies between the power, the wealth, the welfare of some and that of others. So to imagine that we are suddenly, after several hundred thousand years, going to solve this problem exactly at the same time that we're also dealing with climate change and energy depletion and all that, spread of nuclear weapons. And, I mean, that's just a fantasy. Um, in theory, you could have several billion people on this planet at a fairly high level of health, knowledge, welfare, in theory. In practice, I don't think it's going to happen. How it's going to be is growth is in the process of stopping. Like it or not, poor people or not. The days of the kind of industrial expansion that we saw in the 90s is over. It's just gone. I can develop a theoretical foundation for that, uh, but you must con confess, if you kind of look around the world today, there is this kind of niggling suspicion that maybe something's different. Climate change is going to be horrendous. So, I mean, here we are. You can sit around and talk about the poor people and liberty and all that stuff, but meanwhile, things are changing. You know, as I said the other day, we worry about climate change, but climate change doesn't worry about us. Hmm. It's, it just does what it's going to do. And if it makes us poor or starving, the climate could care less. There's a saying which I find very useful in English, which is, if something can't go on forever, it probably won't. Our growth can't go on forever. It's going to stop one way or another.